in spite of the sin, in spite of what we have done, in spite of what we are doing, the Lord is not willing that any should perish. Even though tonight this world that we are living in, this world, even though this world is doomed for judgment, this world is doomed for judgment. And even though this world is doomed for judgment, <laughs> the Lord is not willing that any should perish. Even though this world is filled with evil, even though the wickedness of man is great, the Lord is not willing that any should perish. Even though tonight nobody deserves saving. Nobody deserves saving tonight. And even though nobody deserves saving, still the Lord is not willing that any should hurt. Read a story this week of a ship whose crew, the crew mutinied, had murdered the captain, and the crew threw him overboard, and the captain was the owner's son. They murdered him, as I have already said, and they threw him overboard. And the captain was the owner's son. The crew thought they could control the ship, but then a storm came, and not one among the crew could control the ship. The ship at this stage was heading very dangerously towards rocks until she hit the rock, and the ship began to slowly sink with the crew on board. The father, knowing the plight of the men and knowing what they had done to his son, done something remarkable. He set out to save the crew that killed his son. One man said to the father, you're mad. They murdered your son. They deserve to drown. The father said to this man, I will pardon their awful crime. And I'm going to save everyone every one of them that will have saving. That's what the father of that murdered son said concerning the men that killed him. I will save every man that will have saving. Wonder will you have saving tonight? Will you be saved? You're perishing. None of us tonight deserve saving. I don't deserve to be saved tonight, but the Lord saved me. But will you have saving tonight? Because you are perishing in the sea of sin. But the Father in heaven tonight will save you if you will have saving. The Lord is not willing, no matter who you are, what you are, where you're from, and what you've done, the Lord is not willing. That any man should perish, but that you would come to repentance. Do you know something, friends, this evening? You can be saved. And the message is tonight you must be saved.
Because God's Word says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. God's message this evening, I have called it an earnest invitation. When you read my text tonight, you'll find how earnest this invitation is. My text this evening is in Psalm 2, and it's right down at the very end, and it's verse 12. And I want you to listen tonight to this earnest invitation for your immortal soul. Psalm 2, verse 12. Kiss the Son, lest He be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and ye perish by the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. But blessed are they which put their trust in him. I'll tell you that's an earnest invitation not to be taken lightly. I want you to notice first of all, but it's not me that wants you, it's God that wants you. The Lord wants you to notice first of all, there is a plea that has sounded through that text tonight. A plea. It's a twofold plea. Kiss the Son lest he be angry. You see, friends, this evening, what's God trying to say to us? God's trying to say this, listen, my son has done everything he has to do to save you. My son went to the cross for you. My son suffered on the cross for you. My son bled on the cross for you. My son died on the cross for you. I even turned my back on my son while he was on the cross for you. And God is saying to your soul tonight, my son has done everything that he was called to do in order for you to be saved. And tonight God is saying to your soul, and God is saying to your heart, and God is saying to your mind, for goodness sake, kiss the son. Lest he be angry. There's nothing more the Son can do. But the Son is waiting. And the Son is watching tonight. Do you know what he's waiting on? Do you know what he's watching for? He's waiting for you, love. He's waiting for you, sir, to repent of your sin. And to come to him. As I have said, it's a twofold plea. Kiss the Son. That tells me mercy is pleading. Lest he be angry, that tells me judgment is threatening. Mercy is pleading in the text, but judgment is threatening. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. Lest he be angry. What does that teach us today? I'll tell you what it teaches. The Son won't always be loving. We all sing that we children's hymn, Gentle Jesus, make and mine. But you never think the day will come when the Son that is loving now, he won't always be loving, dear. The day will come when Christ will be angry. Kiss the Son lest, lest, he be angry. Kiss the Son. That's the word of welcome. Lest he be angry. That's the word of warning. My friend this evening, have you ever considered once that the Lord Jesus one day will be angry with you? 
He loves you. Of course he does. He's merciful to you. Of course he is. Do you ever think of the day when he'll be angry? When he'll be angry with you? Just the son. Yes, he will be angry. You know, all these years, all these years it has been his mercy that has spared you. All these years, he has been loving you. All these years, he's been so merciful to you. All these years, he's been reaching out to you. Ah, but you've refused, and you've rebelled, and you've turned your back and said, not this man. I'm telling you, waking up to the call tonight, kiss the sun, lest he be angry. This is real. A plea that is sound. I'll tell you, my dear friend, it should touch your heart to know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Friend, the Son has come to seek and to save that which is lost. God commended his love towards us in that way we were yet sinners. His Son, Christ, died for us. But the plea is tonight, kiss the Son lest, lest he be angry. Way back in the year of 1829, it was December of 1829, two men, George Wilson and James Porter, were sentenced to death for robbing a train. President Andrew Jackson was the President of the United States of America back then, but George Wilson's family went to the President and pleaded and pleaded for a pardon. There was nobody killed in that robbery. But the two men were sentenced to death for their crimes. James Porter was hung. George Wilson, his sentence was relayed as the family pleaded with President Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson listened to their pleas. He fell for their pleas. And he wrote out a formal pardon that would set him free. The president said, that pardon stands on my word and it stands on my authority on the grounds that that pardon will be accepted. It's useless if it's not accepted. But with my authority, if accepted, Wilson won't die. News got to Wilson. And Wilson says, I won't have the pardon. For me to accept the pardon means that I am admitting to the crime. It went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, and they actually tried to force the pardon on Wilson to take the pardon, but he wouldn't have it. Wouldn't accept it. You see, that's what pride does. Won't admit the guilt. And Andrew Jackson says, when they put the noose around his neck and they put the hood over his head, if he holds up and says, I accept at that point, he will be pardoned. He climbed the gallows steps. His feet were shackled. And walked over to the trap door where he would be hung. And somebody shouted up, 
Wilson, you can be pardoned, you can be pardoned. That day, even though a pardon was offered, a pardon was rejected. George Wilson died a death that he didn't have to die. How many times has God offered you his pardon? Has pleaded with your soul, but you have refused to accept the pardon. Kiss the son tonight, lest he be angry. That's the plea that is sounded. But in this text, there's a pearl that is sounded. And ye perish by the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. I'm telling you there's a pearl attached to this text tonight. And the pearl is tonight that you'll perish if you fail to kiss the sun. You know, friend, Listen, that's how earnest this call is to me. Kiss the son lest he be angry, and ye perish by the way. Does that not trouble you tonight? That the son has done everything he had to do to save you. And tonight there's a pardon being extended. But you won't accept it. You won't have it. You've heard it night in, night out of how much he loves you and how mercy has spared you. But you still won't have it, friend. But you listen to the earnestness of this invitation tonight. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish. It's a big thing to perish. It's an awful thing to perish. I'm telling you, someday the hand of mercy is going to become the hand of judgment. You see the hand of mercy right now, it's holding you. Over the very fires of hell you're dangling. And it's the very hand of mercy that's holding on, hoping and pleading that you'll accept his offer. But someday that hand of mercy is going to let go. And down you'll fall into the everlasting flame. You kiss the sun tonight as he's holding on to you by the hand of mercy, lest he be angry, and he lets go, and ye perish. By the way, see when he lets go, see when that hand opens, no church can do anything for you. See when that hand of mercy lets go, no clergyman can do anything for you either. And that hand opens, and mercy gives way to judgment. It's all over, friend. I'm telling you, it's all over. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish by the way when his wrath is kindled against you. You think of the lips of the Lord Jesus who said, come to me, those lips of love, when one day those same lips will say to you, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. The plea that has sounded, the pearl that has sounded, but let's finish tonight on a sweet note. There's a, per, there's a promise that I've said. It says there, Blessed are all they that put their trust in Him. I'm telling you, that's a wonderful promise tonight. 
Blessed are they, it says, that put their trust in him. Blessed are they who don't put their trust in their church. There's a whole lot of people in the kingdom of more putting their trust in the church, you know. No, no, this text gives a wonderful promise. Blessed are they who, all they who put their trust in him. Notice the condition of the promise. Blessed. Do you know what blessed means? Happy. Do you know why I'm happy I'm a Christian tonight? Thirty years ago on the 26th of this month in St. James's Parish Church, the parish of Ciarnteel and Crilly, I came to know Christ and I came to trust Him. And I'll tell you, friend, life has been blessed, not born, blessed. Happy and blessed is the man, all them that put their trust in Him. I'm telling you, if you want happiness, if you want blessedness, trust in Him. I'll fill you, he'll fill you with joy. Think of the blessedness, the blessedness of forgiveness, the blessedness of assurance, the blessedness of heaven, the blessedness of a new life, the blessedness of eternal life. God, glory to God. That's the condition. But look at the crowd. Are all they? Blessed are all they. That's the crowd. Blessed are all they. That's the whosoever will. If that someone is a murderer, blessed them if they put their trust in him. If that person's a thief, blessed are they if they put their trust in him. If he's an old scoundrel, blessed are they if they put their trust in him. If he's a drunkard, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. All who see their need tonight, blessed are all they. Here's the claim that put their trust in him. I'm telling you, friend, you don't need to pay for salvation tonight. All you're asked to do is to come, and here's the thing. Trust in Him. Repent of your sin. Trust in Him. Ask the Lord Jesus into your heart. That's what it is. That's all I do. Reverend Brenton McCarthy was the wee minister who led me to the Lord. He prayed a wee sinner's prayer, and I prayed it, and he says, I'll go and tell somebody. I didn't see any bolt of lightning or feel anything, but I knew there was a burden lifted. Go and tell somebody, he said. The first man I told was Davy Parker, my woodwork teacher at school. Well, he was when I went to school. And I'll tell you from the 26th of August to the 26th of August 1985 to the 9th of August 2015, I'm telling you, I'm blessed. I'm not bored. I'm blessed. And this blessedness, this happiness, this joy can be yours. Can be yours. But I'll tell you, this verse finishes with Christ. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. No friend, Christ is the answer to your need because Christ died on the cross to make it possible. He was buried, aye, but he rose again. And thank God tonight, he's my Savior. Now here's the earnest, ta- here's the earnest invitation. Kiss the Son. Doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, young or old. Here's God's plea to your immortal soul. Kiss the Son lest he be angry. And ye perish, do you get that? And ye perish by the way when his wrath is kindled a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. See, everybody that put their trust in him, we have an anchor that keeps the soul. Don't reject this invitation to me. You trust him or you perish. Come and be blessed and be filled with joy for his name's sake. Amen. 180 in the red hymn book. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife? When the clouds, uh, sorry, when the strong tides lift and the cables strain, will your anchor hold or uh, will your anchor shift or firm remain? 180 and then we'll stand to close uh, for the closing prayer. Thank you.